What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, so finally turn the form around right before the international break. Great timing. Um, but yeah, I mean overall, this was a better game, better performance, obviously a better result than we've been seeing. Yeah, I mean just overall, the, the feel around the team felt better. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, right before the international break, so we've got to wait two weeks before we can play again. So hopefully in that time, you know, you got to worry about injuries, you got to worry about players going, playing for their team, and then coming back with jet lag and getting back into the rhythm of things. So, yeah, it's it's a little frustrating that we waited until now when we had so many games that we could have picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off, and really gone at it. Um, it just felt like it took forever for us to get that feeling back. And now that we have, well, now our momentum is gone because <laughs> we're... Some some players will get to rest, which is good, but most of them will be playing, and they'll be playing somewhere else. So um, it, overall, it's kind of frustrating that, that we chose today to finally turn things around. But as far as Tuchel is concerned, uh, I will say I'm still not happy with the decisions he made today. I mean, the lineup ended up being okay, but it still didn't feel very fluid. There was a lot, especially in the first half, there were a lot of moments where it felt like we weren't really connecting well um, because... I mean, we're using a new formation, and also I don't really feel like he's putting out our best team. Um, but then second half, we did pick it up. Um, and subs-wise, you know, Conte coming on for Jorginho, that just brings you more energy in the midfield. But then you've got Alonso coming on for hudson Adoy, which changed us into a back five again, with Alonso and Espelio Cueta as the wingbacks. Um, and I don't know, I just, I didn't really feel like we needed to go to a back five. I felt like we were controlling the game plenty. You know, we just needed a bit more energy in the midfield. And I don't think Alonso brought that. I feel like it would have been better maybe to drop Mount a bit deeper and maybe even bring on Werner so that way we had something going for us up top. Because Lukaku was not really giving us much. Mount and Ziyech were working hard, but it still wasn't really helping us get out of that pressure that Tottenham were putting us under because we didn't have our target man really helping us in the second half. Um... So I thought Werner would have been a great one to sort of drop deep and win it. Or even Havertz, you know, he's another one that does well dropping a bit deeper, receiving, and then turning the defender or, you know, basically playing out of the pressure. Um, just as long as you don't basically make him your target man. I think he's good at receiving at feet and playing off of the pressure. Um, and then the last one was Saul because Ziyech was feeling something. And again... I mean, Saul's not really a player that's going to help you that much. So I don't really understand the Alonzo or Saul subs. I don't really feel like they, they helped us that much. I don't feel like they changed the game in our favor. It just, it was sort of, okay, so you bring on Alonzo and now we're back to our more comfortable shape, which is fine, except for the fact that we're now we're sitting deeper and letting Tottenham come onto us. And it was allowing Tottenham to sort of have more joy and more possession in our final third, which created some really good chances for them. Um, and really, they... They could have made it 2-1 easily for a couple moments um, late on in the second half. And we saw what happened whenever Lester let him back in late. So I I just don't understand these changes because neither of them benefited us. Both of them just sort of, I don't, I don't know, they didn't change anything for the good. <laughs> there were just a couple changes that I felt like kind of hurt us ultimately. So as far as Tuchel's concerned, you know, obviously... He's on the hot seat for me. I don't think he's on the hot seat for most of the fan base or the board, though, because, I mean, like I said, I think I said this in the Brighton review. Um, I mean, as far as what we're doing, yes, we're out of the title race now, but we're still in the EFL Cup. We're still in the FA Cup. We're still in the Champions League. We're about to play in the uh, the Club World Cup, and we already won the Super Cup this year. So he's still keeping us in a lot of competitions. It's just, unfortunately for the league, we've suffered. Um, and I feel like we are going to suffer as long as Tuchel's in charge in the league because this winter, um, not break, winter month, you know, the, the December run of games, basically, I feel like he struggles to find a way to make quality changes in a way that keeps us fresh but also benefits us on the field, um, which is why we dropped so many points and why now Man City is running away with it and basically we're out of it within one month because he just struggles to deal with this run of games. Um, and, of course, the injuries as well don't help. So as far as the individuals on the field, Keppa had to make a couple good saves, but for the most part kind of a bystander today, which is fine. You know, I don't 
I don't mind seeing him not really worked. But yeah, the the couple saves he had to make were good. Um, for the one where Kane ended up being penalized for the push on Silva, um, most of the time he does well to come out quicker. But I do think a lot of that came down to he thought Silva had it, and then of course you know Kane nudges him out of the way. So I, I think that kind of is why he wasn't as ready to come out and you know meet the challenge. Um, but everything else he did today was perfectly fine. It's Billy Cueto on the right back position. I thought again another good game. I actually saw a an article <laughs> on Facebook. Somebody was giving all the player ratings, and they gave us Billy Cueto a two point five for the Brighton game, solely because he wasn't like his crosses and his shots and his passing in the final third wasn't great. And my thing is, if you're going to give him a 2.5 because of that, then almost everybody on the field deserves a 2.5. You know, like, you can't judge somebody solely based on, especially a defender, solely based on, okay, is he sending in good crosses? Because you got to look at everything else he's doing, because based on his work rate alone, it's really quite to deserves at least a 7 every game. And today was another good example. In the final third, yes, he struggles. He has he has moments where he gives the ball away too cheaply, or his crosses aren't the best, they're overhit, or you know, his passing sometimes can leave players a, a little bit short. So I understand that's a problem, but look at how much he does for the team. Look how much work he puts in for the team. His defending is top class. He got beat like once today out of all the times that he had to, you know, go one on one with a guy. So. I just I don't under I don't understand how anybody could possibly give him a 2.5 for any game. Like he would have to basically substitute his brain for I don't know Doherty. Um, <laughs> there's there's no way that Espilicueta will ever put in a 2.5 performance in my opinion. Um, Silva on no Rudiger was actually on the right side and I thought that was actually a nice balance because you had Silva who's a bit more controlled and a bit more, I guess, intelligent with his positioning on the side with Saar, who his positioning is what he severely lacks. So I thought that was a good balance. And then Rudiger has the pace to make up for when Spilicueta is not quite as fast at, at um, what's it called? Running back, checking back, recovering. That's the word I'm looking for. So I thought that was a nice little balance that, you know, <laughs> helped us throughout most of the game. Cause I've seen it before where, you know, like, for instance, how he ended the game where Saar is on Alonzo's side. Neither of them are great at defending, so that side's going to be very weak. Whereas if you put Rudiger on that side and Saar on the side with the Spiliqueta, then you're a bit more solid overall. Um, that's something I forgot to talk about from Tuchel. But, I mean, as far as Silva's concerned, he's still showing what he's got. Obviously, the goal is fantastic, but his defensive capabilities are amazing. You know, he hardly ever puts a foot wrong. Some people will say he went over too easy. I mean, he got pushed in the back. <laughs> sure, it may not have been like a shove, but it was a push in the back. It's the same thing as when you're about to jump for the ball and somebody gives you a nudge from behind. It may not be much, but it's enough to put you off. In this case, he's running this way, and he's about to stop to try to cut back for the pass, and the forward gives him, you know, Kane gives him a little shove from behind. It's enough to put him off to where, yeah, it's a foul. Um, and it's funny how many people have complained about that and nobody's talking about how Doherty should have been sent off for his studs-up challenge on uh, Sar's ankle, which ironically wasn't even a foul because Paul Tierney's an idiot. Um, but yeah, I mean, Silva overall, it's funny how people were so much talking about how Rudiger, you know, is he worth 400000 a week? Is he worth all this money? I'm looking at Silva saying he's honestly the one that should be paid more than Rudiger because he's the one that consistently puts in good performances week after week. There's no craziness. There's no, oh my gosh, what is he going to do today? For Silva, it's always just consistent quality ever since, you know, that first run of games where he came in and it was a little rough, you know, coming into a new league. He didn't really, I, I don't think he fit into Lampard's system very well. But then Tuchel came in, and Tuchel set up the system for him to really succeed and really let him run that back line in a way that's keeping us very compact and controlled. It's just so nice to watch whenever he's playing well because um, he provides so much help for the people around him. And Rudiger, you know, overall did well today, um, but 
he still has those moments where it feels like he's not quite in tune with what's going on or goes into something crazy, makes a run down the field and leaves us exposed at the back, especially today where we only have four back there instead of our typical five. I just, I do worry about that side of him because it feels like over the past run of games, that side has shown itself more and more. So all this talk about, are we going to pay him that amount of money? Well, if he's going to let this continue to play his game, I don't know if he's worth that amount of money, honestly. Yes, he's a very talented defender, and he's got a lot of physical capability and defensive capability, but <laughs> if his if he can't keep the mental side of his game under control, there's always that worry of, is he going to go diving into a stupid challenge? Is he going to get himself sent off for a stupid challenge? Is he going to make a run down the field that leads to giveaway, and suddenly now we're missing a defender in the back? I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of I'm I'm thinking that's kind of what's maybe a bit of the hold up. It's probably also just do you want to pay that much money for a defender in general? Um, especially when you have options. You know, I don't know if we have a buyback clause for Zuma or Tomori, but they're very much good options you could bring back. So um yeah, I don't I don't know what all the talks are, what is the hold up, but I will say the more that Rudiger has these moments, the more worried I am that we are going to be overpaying for a defender that's going to leave us exposed from time to time. And then Saar on the left side, um, probably his best game, in my opinion, which is not saying much. But, I mean, overall, I thought he looked a lot better today, looked a lot more comfortable on the ball. Defensively, I thought he did a lot better with his positioning. He still definitely has a lot of gaps in his game. But, I mean... It is getting better, so there's that bright side. It's just if I'm if I'm stuck between a choice between Saar and Christensen or Chalaba or Alonzo on the left back position, I'm probably not gonna choose Saar <laughs> just because of the gaps in his game, because of how exposed he can leave us. Um, I just I don't know. There's not enough in his game I feel to really help us. He's just finally gotten to the point where, he, kind of how Saul was, you know, at first it was Saul was hurting us, and then he finally got to a point where he wasn't helping us still, but he wasn't hurting us anymore. That's kind of where I feel like Saar is now. Like, he's still not helping us, but he's not hurting us anymore. So, like, that's good, but I still would rather have somebody in there that's going to help us. And granted, I mean, Alonzo's not really been helping us much either. Christensen has also not helped us that much. So I guess you could make the argument that None of those three are helping us at the moment, so it is kind of a you can put in whoever and it'll be fine. But I would rather go get somebody, you know, I would rather hold on to a Tomori or a Zuma rather than keeping Sar because they're going to help us. They're not, they're not just going to be there and do their job okay and kind of be silent most of the game. Um, and then you got the midfield, Jorginho, Kovacic. Both of them played okay. Uh, Jorginho had a rough first half, though. Just all the times he got beat, all the times he got turned and then beat for pace. I mean, it, that's what I come to expect out of him. So anytime I see him in the midfield, eh, I'm, I'm just going to worry. <laughs> because that's what's going to happen. He's going to get beat for pace. He's going to get turned way too easily and stick out a leg, maybe bring a guy down, maybe get yellow carded. It's going to happen because that is part of Jorginho's game, unfortunately. Um, I don't know why nobody else sees it, but... It is what it is. Kovacic, you know, he'll bring a work rate. He'll bring energy in the midfield, an ability to turn out of tough situations and get us moving downfield. His passing, you know, the ball in behind, the pass in the final third to cut apart the defense, still needs work, still not quite finding that through ball that we need, but it's it's getting better. You know, it's getting closer. It's not nearly as bad <laughs> As some games he gives it away and it's just an instant counterattack. Today his giveaways were much more, they were ambitious efforts that, yes, they they were giveaways, but they weren't giveaways that instantly turned into trouble for us. Um, so, it kind of take that for what you will. It's it's good, it's better, but it's still not quite what we need from him. Um, Hudson Adoy had a really rough first half, uh, just constantly. On the ball, way too slow, way too easy to, to strip him of the ball. Um, second half, he did step it up a bit. Um, obviously, the run that he made that set up for ZX goal was really well done. But he still has those moments where it feels like he sort of fades out of the game. And um, I don't know. I, 
from a player that's had so much promise, I just don't really see what he's bringing to the team right now that you couldn't get out of a Werner or out of a Havertz. You couldn't get more out of them, honestly. So, yeah, I, I'm just as I'm watching him today, I'm thinking. I, I think we have better options than him. I think Werner would be better out there just because of the pace that he has and the, the willingness to run. Even though he's not really a wing player, I think he would just provide much more energy for our attack. So, but, I mean, overall he was okay. It was just, I think we have better options on the bench. Uh, Mount in the middle, I thought, looked really good again today, but just the finishing is still something he's not really bringing for us, unfortunately. Um, and that's something that I think he's going to get a lot of criticism. The more that he can't be involved, the more that he can't finish or get the assist or whatever. I mean, he did put in a good cross for Silva's goal. But I just I feel like in the build-up play, he has so much energy and he moves so much and finds himself in so much room, honestly, that he should be providing more great crosses, great balls in that are leading to goals. And he should be finishing more, too. Um so it, it's kind of one of those things similar to Werner, not tep, not typically a finisher, but his work effort, effort, his work ethic, his effort on the field, everything he does to sort of move the defense around and cause problems for them, I think, outweighs the misses and the, the giveaways and all of that that sometimes will happen. <clears throat> and then Ziyech, I thought had his best game today for us for. A, a while. <laughs> I mean, apart from the goal, which was fantastically hit, just everything about his play today was really, really good. You know, so much energy. He wanted to get on the ball. He wanted to try things. He was putting in dangerous crosses, hardly giving the ball away. His touch overall today was really, really good. So I hope he can keep that up because this is the type of Ziyech I'd prefer to see, not what we've been seeing over the past couple games. Uh, so definitely a step in the right direction for him and Again, I just I want more consistency out of him because he's had these games before, but then he'll have several games where he's not as effective. His shot, his crosses are awful. His first touch is terrible. He's not really working for the team, and it just gets frustrating to watch. And then all of a sudden he'll put in a performance like this, and you're thinking, he's fantastic, he's amazing, he should play every game. And then he plays the next game, and you don't see much from him. So he needs more consistency, more... Honestly, he needs some more momentum, which again, is why it's frustrating that he waited until... <laughs> right before the international break to put in this type of performance. Um, so we'll, hopefully he comes back flying and really looking forward to playing more and getting on the ball more, scoring more, all that. And then you got Lukaku, and yeah, he was probably our worst player today. Um, they kept talking about him in the commentary, like, oh, they're just playing so much more to his strengths. He's having He looks much more comfortable in there. I don't know what game they were watching, but I kept seeing the same old Lukaku. You know, you got the defender here, you got Lukaku here. Cross is about to come in. Instead of a darting run in front of the defender to the goals here, by the way. Instead of a darting run in front of the defender to cause some problems or, you know, force them to have to move, it's a run behind the defender, which means the defender can now, oh, head it away. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Time and time again. Even when crosses were not about to come in, where's he going? Run around the defender. How are we supposed to find you if you're running behind the defender? Every single time. Like, I just, I can't think of one moment where he darted in front of the defender. Or he made a run, like, checked in and then went behind him. Or went behind him and then checked back. It's just always, whoop. <laughs> and it's the same pace as the defender, too. So it's not like he's darting in behind like Werner will sometimes do. He'll dart in and beat him for pace. For Lukaku, it's, and the defender can easily track that. And then the cross comes in, and sure enough, Defender's ahead of him, defender beats him to the ball, they head it away, and it's so easy. So easy to defend against him. I don't know what they were looking at today. Yes, we were playing the ball forward more, which was great for our overall team play, but Lukaku is not benefiting off of anything because he's still making the same exact run that doesn't help us. It doesn't, it doesn't help the crosser, it doesn't help people trying to find him, he's just making a run to hide behind the defense, and then we can't find him. And then the defender beats him to the ball again. So it's not like he didn't do anything good today. He had some good moments on the ball, but most of them were not in the box. Most of the good moments happened, you know, around the midfield line <laughs> where we play the ball up and he does well to beat the defender, which, I mean, he's up against Dyer and Sanchez, so it's not like he had tough opposition today. But 
we need him to be more effective in the box. We brought him in to be a clinical striker that makes those good runs, that reads the game well, and can actually be effective in the box. You know, dart in front of the defender, cause problems, be a distraction, put a challenge under the defender so he doesn't have a clean header away. So maybe he heads it right back up in the air, and now all of a sudden it's dangerous. But instead, he's just not even—he's not even affecting the game. <laughs> he's just there. He's a body. So, and what's honestly what's even more frustrating about this is watching Brogia play against Man City, and cause so many problems for their defense. For Man City's defense, Brogia is just putting in challenges. He's constantly in motion. He's trying to to work the defense trying to cause some issues and really put them under pressure. I can't remember Lukaku doing that at any point to the Man City defense. I think Broja created more chances and caused more problems for Man City's defense yesterday than Lukaku did over the two games where he played against City. That's really telling for me. When our 18-year-old Loney can do more damage to the, the Man City defense than our 90 million pound striker that we brought in, why did we bring him in? We had Giroud. We had Abraham. We had Broja. We had those three that could easily do what he's doing, if not better. <laughs> so why are we bringing a player like him in if he's not going to provide for us? And again, I know he's had good games. I know he's played well. He's had moments where he's been very... He's working hard. He's very energetic. He's making things happen. But for the most part, if you look at the average of what he's done this season... It's been mostly this. It's been mostly games like this where he's just invisible. He's John Cena. He can't be seen because he's hiding behind the defender. So I just, I don't want a player like that. I don't want to have a striker like that at my club because he's not going to give us anything. Especially in key games like this, we have to rely on Ziyech being a fantastic striker of the ball and then Silva just being an amazing defender and <laughs> attacking the ball in, in the attacking third as well. We can't really rely on our striker to get the job done anymore. You know, Werner, we can at least rely on him to make the defense have to chase him. You know, cause problems for the defense in a way where it opens up space for other people. With Lukaku, he doesn't even give you that. So, yeah, I'm just I'm still frustrated with him. I still don't really want to see him. I don't know why Tuchel continues to pick him honestly because it's just not good enough. <sighs> and then the subs that came on, uh, Conte. You know, came on, looked a lot f more fit, I guess, faster, quicker than he's, he has looked over the past couple games. So it looks like he's on the road to recovery. Uh, I don't know if he got called up for France. I'm kind of hoping not because I want him to be able to recover fully because we need him at 100% fitness. Um, but yeah, today looks better for him. And then uh, Alonzo came on. Didn't really do much while he was on the field. I mean, he came on pretty late, uh, and so did Saul. Like, neither of them really had a chance to really affect the game. And like I said, they're not really the most energetic players, and Tottenham had stepped up their pace. <laughs> so they were coming on really in a difficult situation, and I don't think either of them really adjusted well to it. So they, they didn't do anything bad, but they didn't really do anything to affect the game for us either. So, But all in all, I mean, it is, it's a good result. It's a good performance, which is good. <laughs> But there's still some issues that I feel like Tuchel needs to figure out. And whether or not we can get anybody in before the deadline at the end of January remains to be seen. I'm hoping we do. I know there's talk about us getting a, a left back from Darby, a young left back who I guess is very promising. Um, and I think there's... Who's the other one? I can't remember the other one that I've, I've seen us linked with. But there was another player, I think a... A midfielder that we were linked with. I don't remember now. But, I mean, I don't know. I just, I feel like we need to do something because Chilwell and James still don't know how long they're going to be out for. You know, it seems like they're getting close to being recovered, but it still could be another month. And I don't know if we can go another month without having them in our ranks because they bring so much. Um, that, I mean, you look at Alonzo, he's not nearly the player that he was all those years ago when Conte first brought him in. And it's Billy Cueta, as big of a workhorse as he is, he's not good when he gets in the final third, so he's not really a wing back. So I feel like Chilwell and James, you look at how many goals they've contributed to this year, you need players like that. You need them to step up and get back into the team. So if we don't have an option for that, 
we're kind of screwed. So we need to look at bringing in ooh, some better talent on the wing back position, um, or at least fullback, something to just help us to at least get through to the point where we have both of them back and they can help us again. Um, but all in all, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Chelsea reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.